Today I wanted to start sort of a new series of some videos talking about some of the instruments I own and have owned in the past. Uh, I've been playing guitar for over 50 years, uh, well over 50, closer to 60 actually. And um, my first decent guitar was a 12 string. It was a Penco 12 string. Those of you who know or are in the know know that Penco was a uh, early Japanese acoustic um, that was, uh, or a company that put out acoustics and electrics. Um, I believe they were started in Pennsylvania, Penco, and at uh, Medley Music, I believe, in Bryn Mawr. But that could be wrong. Who knows? But I think that's right. Anyway, but the first uh, seven, eight years I played guitar, really started playing, I played nothing but 12 string. And um, so I've always liked having a 12 string. Well, the years go by, and you, I sold that 12 string when I was in college and then uh, didn't buy another one until, oh, some years back, uh, I guess about 10 years ago, I found online a, a guitar, a 12 string for sale. Now, before I go any further, as you all know, I do a lot of repairs and modifications, blah, 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 and have for also about over 50 years. And one of the things I've noticed about the 12 strings that have come through my door, and there's been a lot of them, is that there are two brands of 12 strings that are almost without question, always good sounding 12 strings. Um, one of them is Guild. Guild, I've noticed that Guild 12 strings, especially ones that have aged well, um, generally have a beautiful voice. And the other ones, amazingly, are not Guild. <laughs> they're, uh, they're actually uh, Seagull, Seagull 12 strings and have a really nice voice. So I, um, sure enough, about 10 years ago or so, on eBay, somebody was selling a Seagull M12, 12-string, uh, 12 M meaning mahogany, I believe. And as you know, most Seagulls or many Seagull acoustics are uh, cedar top and cherry, wild cherry back and sides. This is a little different. This was a, a spruce top and uh, mahogany laminated mahogany sides and back and um, I thought why not the guy was selling it for 200 bucks I bought it came with a hard shell case and uh, this is what it looked like um, and it actually looked even better than this I believe the case fell <laughs> one time I was opening or closing the case and it caused a little scratch you can just see it there if you catch it just the light right there it is and um, this is what I got. Now, the first thing I noticed when I got this silly guitar, this seagull, the little seagull up there, uh, when I got this seagull uh, 12 string, is that uh, the action was kind of unplayable. It wasn't set up very well. And the second thing I noticed was that it had on the inside, I don't know if you can see it there, uh, no, you can't really, but inside there on that little label, there's printed the letters FS. Uh, for those that you don't know what that means, that means factory second. So uh, as I started to try to lower the action on this thing, I realized it wasn't going to lower very well because probably the reason it was a factory second is that the uh, neck angle uh, was wrong. And now these are not terribly tough to do, to redo, but it probably was going to cost some more. It probably got to the end of the line. Somebody was stringing up said, oh man, you know, the neck angle's wrong. Hmm. <laughs> and they probably thought, okay, well, even though it's a bolt-on neck, these necks, these early ones were bolt-on, um, you still had to remove the fingerboard from the top here. That would mean heating it, uh, removing the glue. Oh. And, you know, it would take time and probably cost them more to repair it than to just sell it as a factory second. So they sold it as a factory second. And although it was sort of playable, eh, it wasn't really. It was, the action was a bit high and anybody who ever has owned a 12 string knows that uh, if the action's high on a 12 string, you're like dying when you're trying to play it. You can put capos on it to try to lower it a little bit wherever you're playing it, but it's, it's ugly. Anyway, what did I do? 
Well, um, the other thing about luthiers and people who repair instruments is that you tend to be sort of like doctors. You, you do everybody else first, and then when you finally have time and no other excuse, you then go after your own instruments and fix those. And that's what I did. I had this thing for 10 years, played it as it was, and it was hard to play and a pain in the butt. And so recently I thought, I've got a little bit of time. Let me just pop this neck off and fix it. I, I took a block of aluminum, solid block of aluminum, cut slots in it, and those slots correspond with the frets up here so that the block will sit on the frets. Now, obviously without the strings on here, but this would sit on the frets and the slots would allow the frets to, uh, or see, allow the wood that is to touch the uh, aluminum and the slots would then fit where the frets were. So it fit flat on against the wood. And when I added heat to it, the heat would then transfer directly to the wood and uh, then allow the glue to soften. Let me pop this little uh, end of the fingerboard off the top here without any damage and yippee, everything's good. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do this. This just is a very neat way to do this. But um, so I made this, did this, pulled it off, unbolted it, bang, came right off. I then uh, recut this angle here on the neck. I removed about, ooh, I guess it was probably a little less than a millimeter from the heel area here. And then of course graduated it up uh, on both sides. And um, then put it back on and the neck now is at a perfect neck angle. The neck, as it's supposed to, the top of the fingerboard points directly to the top of the bridge. That allows me to have a nice, you can see I've got a nice, decent sized saddle there. Not too high, not too low, just right. And it um, allows the strings to sit at a ridiculously low. <laughs> I think it's, a, I think I've got it at one, 1.25 millimeters on the base side and 0.75 millimeters on the treble side, which is very low. But it sounds and plays amazing. Um, now, again, 12 strings. 12 strings tend to be extremely bright. And to make matters worse, you generally will want to put a lighter gauge string on here. Why? Because you don't want to tear this bridge off. Uh, if it's just a six string, you're putting about 160 pounds of tension on here. You put 12 strings on here, it's almost doubling that. In fact, it comes almost exactly close to doubling that. So it's about 300 pounds of tension on this little piece of bridge glued to the top. Now, because of that, a lot of uh, 12 string makers uh, like Ovation and, and a lot of them actually, Takamine, will put bolts in through the top and have like a bolt and a nut so it won't just tear off dramatically. This one is not. This one's actually glued on and it's glued on well. One of the things I do is uh, rather than allow full tension on the neck and the bridge and all that, I generally tune it down a whole step. So when I'm playing G here, that's really the chord F. Um, it's, it's down lower. So for me to play a G, I'd have to play an A. And that would be sound like a G chord. Anyway, so you lower the tension a little bit and it makes it play better. Now, and also protects the guitar against, you know, crazy stuff like pulling up the uh, bridge or whatever. Um, so, so here's one of the things. I have this uh, set up with just a, I have a condenser mic here. Uh, an Omni that I use that is extremely flat sounding. I used to use this for choirs and things. And you can hear. It has a nice voice. And has nice sustain. Still ringing. Um, while I had it apart, and I just happened to have this cheap old tuner slash EQ uh, preamp. <laughs> so what I did is I installed this 
And uh, the nice thing about that, of course, is that now I can I can uh, tune it. There we go. I can tune it, uh, have a tuner built into the guitar. And I also put in uh, pickups that a lot of people aren't going to know about, but if you know anything about acoustic guitars, you should know about these. Journey makes some really nice uh, little um, piezo dots. They're uh, 20 millimeter dots, about, you know, this big around. Uh, and they come in a packet of three. And where you do is you glue them onto the underside of the fingerboard, right under where my finger is here. You have one, one is glued right here between the uh, uh, last strings. I have one that's glued between the middle strings and one that's glued between the top strings. And it picks them all up very evenly. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to show you what that sounds like. I have a, an acoustic amp here. It's actually an acoustic, A-C-O-U-S-T-I-C, -C, uh, A1000 amplifier, a uh, little portable amp, uh, and uh, I have it set flat. I have, as you can see on my EQ here, everything is set in the center, so that's set flat. Everything's set flat on my amp, and this is what it sounds like. up just a hair. Uh, no, I don't want to turn up too much because then it'll just distort. But you get the idea. It definitely... has a wonderful sound in the amp. Anyway, so um, what am I saying? Well, uh, Obviously, the uh, working on this guitar, doing the setup. I did, of course, a full setup after that. Got the action nice and low. Fret level and dress over the whole thing, so the frets are all essentially like brand new. The strings I use on this are a little unusual too. I used um, uh, Martin Retro strings. These are 10 to 47, uh, so they're extra light gauge. Uh, again, it's a 12 string, you don't want to you don't want to put something heavy on here and have it just tear the bridge off. Um, so these are 10 to 47s. So, you know, in light of that even, hearing that through the amplifier it just sounds amazing. Um, it, yeah, it's it's a really nice guitar. These are great little instruments. Uh, if you can get one that's pre-2006, 2006 is when they started to epoxy the next one and everything. Ugh. So if you end up with one of those, that can be a real problem. But anyway, um, if you can pick one of these up and you're looking for a 12 string, these are great little instruments to grab. I got this one cheap. This was a factory second. Well, since I fixed it, it's no longer, it's still a factory second, but it no longer has the problem. Um, and, uh, and it plays and sounds great and plays in tune all the way up the neck. So uh, you might want to check it out. Again, Seagull uh, M12 with a Journey 3 uh, Paizo pickup. And just the cheap, um, what's the company on this? F5T, it's a five band EQ with a tuner. Um, it's all just plugged in, mounted together, all good to go. Uh, and it just sounds and plays great. Take care.
Smoking the way they want 